Glenn Wilson wanted to know about the power of flash in a big softbox. Behind me, I have a 60 inch Glow Easy Lock softbox. And in this video, we're gonna use a speed light, we're gonna use an AD200, and we're gonna use an AD400. And we're simply gonna compare the amount of power that you need to be able to fill the softbox and get some soft light on the subject. Let's get right to it. Okay, so I've got the Octobox in place. I've got the speed light in there. So we are ready to shoot. Of course, we're going to meter each one. We're going to be shooting at F5.6, 160th of a second at ISO 100. And we're simply going to see how much power we need from each of these, these light sources to be able to get the meter reader that we're looking for. So let's jump right in. So first thing, let's get this metered up. So for anyone wondering, I use the Siconic 478D. I've had it for a long time. I like it. It's easy. I like the touch screen. That's kind of why I bought it. But you don't have to have this one. I think they have the 308. That's just as good. It, it, they all do the same thing. Okay. Let's put that in. And we're getting F6.3. Did I say 5.6 or 6.3? <laughs> I said five, six. Okay. Well, we're going to do uh, 6.3 because that's what it came back. So since this is the first one, we'll do 6.3. doesn't matter. Okay. So let's set that at 6.3. Let's put the trigger back on and let's take a shot and see what we get. All right. And that looks pretty good. In flash power, I am at half power with the speed light. Let's switch to the 8200. Let's meter that. Let's see what that reads. Right now it's at quarter power, so let's see what that gives us, and then I'll adjust that either way to get us at F63. And I kid you not, F63. Okay, and, and that actually makes sense. Um, so let's take a shot, let's put the trigger on, and let's see how that looks. Maybe. All right. And that looks pretty good, looks very well exposed to me. So again, we're shooting the 8200 at quarter power. So in going from the speed light to the 8200, we were able to reduce the power by a full stop. That's that. So now we're going to switch to the 8400, see what that gives us, and then we'll wrap this up. Okay, so we're at an eighth power plus 0.3. So almost, uh, what would that be? We were at quarter power on the 8200. So we're about two thirds of a stop uh, uh, less on the uh, 8400. So let's take the shot. Nice, that looks good. So I'm gonna put all three of them on the screen so we can compare. So the point of this video was simply to show that the bigger light source that you use, the less power that you have to use. And under normal circumstances where you're just shooting a shot here and there, you're not doing continuous shots, you're not outside in bright daylight. Uh, in those cases, you generally can get away with a speed light and not really have a problem. But if you're in a case where you do want to be in continuous shooting, you're gonna be shooting a lot of shots in succession, you're gonna be shooting a long shoot, or you're outside, or you're somewhere where the conditions are bright and you're really gonna to have to push the power of whatever light source you're using, that's where the power really comes into play. 
If you're outside and it's bright using a speed light, you're going to struggle with that. And if you're already at half power, you're pushing full power. Number one, you have no room to expand that. If you want to get creative in your shot and you want more light in the scene, you have no way to do that. And two, you're going to run through batteries at an insane rate. And although you can have rechargeable batteries, that just messes up the flow of the shoot. If every five minutes, 10 minutes, you have to stop to change out your batteries. If you got something good going, you're going to stop it right then and there. There's there's no point in that. So depending on what you're trying to do and the situations that you have, that's where a different light source comes into play. And so if you watch videos and you see where people have, you know, all these different types of speed lights and strobes and this power and that power, this is the main reason why, because depending upon the type of shoot that you're doing, there is a more powerful uh, speed light or strobe that may make more sense for you to use over something else. Now, that's not to say that if you don't have it, that you're just out of luck. Use what you have, but just understand the limitations. And when you know those limitations and you understand those limitations, then you can use what you have in a way that feeds to its strengths and not its weaknesses. If you have the ability to get multiple flat, multiple light sources, do that. I keep saying light sources. I don't know why. Speed light, strobes. I don't, I'm not used to saying strobes. If you have the ability to get multiple flashes, uh, in different uh, powers, do that because depending on what, depending upon what you're going to do, that could come in handy. So that being said, let's keep this short. Let's keep this brief. That's that. Uh, if you have any questions on that, drop the comments down below. Uh, if there's any thing you want to see in particular, again, this video I made because a viewer asked the question and I gave the answer. So if there's something that you want to see, if there's a question that you have. Uh, drop that down in the comments below and that just gives me the ideas on the videos that I want to upload. So again, stay safe, stay healthy, do what you're supposed to do. Let's hope that we can get back to doing what it is we love. Take care.